Last year, I did a video titled The Ultimate Gacha Tier List, The Best and Worst Gacha Games of 2023. This video went on to garner 161,000 views, 795 comments, and a lot of likes. A lot of people shared the video, a lot of people shared their thoughts and experiences. Not everyone agreed. Some people went as far as to, and I'm guessing this is because they didn't fully grasp the concept behind a condensed subjective list of games that you like or dislike based on your own preferences and experiences. But tell me that this video was an absolute piece of trash because this game wasn't rated UR, this game wasn't rated N, I rated this game too highly or this game too lowly. And I'm sure the same thing is gonna happen this time because you know what? This tier list is based purely off of my own experiences my own likes and dislikes. You're more than welcome to disagree with any of them. If you have a, a difference of opinion and you think games should be higher or lower, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to discuss this with you all. I thought now, however, would be the perfect time to do this. It's almost the middle of 2024 and I have played quite a few more games since my last tier list. With this in mind, welcome to the ultimate gotcha tier list of 2024. This is gonna be sorted alphabetically. We're gonna begin with Ether Gazer. Ether Gazer is a beautiful game. Ether Gazer has some great combat. Ether Gazer has a pretty decent story. I feel like the waifus are definitely very high tier quality. I feel like Ether Gazer, I don't remember what my uh, my what last year's tier list was, but I would put Ether Gazer probably in the SR tier. It would be SSR if it had a PC client. A PC client is in the works, and when it releases officially on a PC, I would put it as an SSR. But until then, unfortunately, I think it could play a lot better than it does on mobile. Next is AFK Journey. AFK Journey actually just released. I had a ton of fun playing it. Story was surprisingly good, fully voice acted, it had a world to explore. Combat was pretty auto. Good character designs. The, the world itself was was beautiful. It was surprisingly less AFK and idle than I thought it was gonna be. I don't think this is an SSR tier quality game. I do definitely think it is an SR tier, meaning good, but not great. All right after that, we have Alchemy Stars. I feel like Alchemy Stars, it had a, a grid-based battlefield, but it just felt slow. It felt kind of arduous. It was kind of boring. Like, it wasn't a bad game, I just don't feel like it was that great. I I played about 12 hours of it, and by the end of it, I was actually glad that I had stopped. I just, there's something about it that just bored me. Next up is Arknights. Arknights, on the other hand, while Alchemy Stars did kind of bore me, Al uh, Arknights has always left me very happy with almost every single thing I've done. They have very high quality events, they have high quality voice acting, they have high quality characters, high quality animations. The story is kind of, it is, I think, convoluted to an extent because there's just so much there that could be condensed into something much easier to digest, but the story itself is good. There's just way too much of it present. I think the game is very difficult. I think this is definitely an SSR game. This is one of my favorite gacha games of all time. But even though it is one of my favorite gacha games of all time, I still don't think it's a UR quality game. I don't think it is the pinnacle of gacha gaming. It is really, really fun if you like tactical games. But if you don't like tactical strategy games, then you probably won't like it. Or you might like Path to Nowhere more. I don't know, because it's more adult, I guess. Artery Gear. Artery Gear. I don't know, that kind of felt like... That kind of felt too slow. It kind of felt like you weren't really doing much half the time and the the character animations weren't really too high quality. The characters themselves did look pretty good though. I'd put this in the same category as Alchemy Stars as an, as an R quality game. Azure Lane is a game that probably has what is arguably the most lewd, provocative, hyper-sexualized characters that you will find in a gacha game. And I don't know how they get away with having like a PG-13 rating. I really do not. Not only do they have some of the best looking character models in the entire gacha genre, there are only a couple games that can even compete with them, one of which is Nikkei, but they also have a pretty good story, a fun gameplay loop, and are one of the most free-to-play friendly gacha games ever. 
I've never spent more than just like the, the VIP membership that you get in game, that you get in all gacha games. Or at least I think I got the VIP. I don't even remember at this point. Maybe I didn't spend anything at all in Azure Lane. I feel like I did. Or maybe I got a game pass, like a battle pass thing. I don't know. I've only ever spent like maybe a few dollars in the game a couple times. And I've, I've gotten every single high tier quality character I could have ever wanted. I've upgraded them extensively. This game due to its free to play friendliness. Like I've been playing it more recently so I could do a dedicated video on it. And I forgot how free to play friendly and how incredibly attractive the characters are in this game. I would definitely say that this is a staple of what gotcha games should be in terms of what they present to their players, what they allow for their players to obtain purely due to its free to play friendliness, 100%. Next we have Blue Archive, which gets put in the same tier. Like I would put Blue Archive here if I could, in between SSR and UR. Not only is Blue Archive incredibly free to play friendly, they give you 10 poles for only like 1200 uh, peroxide or whatever the, the currency is in the game, the premium currency. But the game is difficult. The story is actually really good. The characters look incredible. The the events are always just constantly flowing. They give you every like they are they are very generous with their game and they make a crap ton of money. I think if I could, I would have this as like SSR plus. Before we go any deeper into this tier list though, I want to take a moment here to thank my incredible patrons over on Patreon who allow for me to continue to do dedicated videos like this every single day. You guys are phenomenal. I cannot thank you all enough for the support. Next, we have uh, Book of Yogg. <laughs> that was a, a terrible game. That really was. Next, Brown Dust 2, easily SSR. You wanna know why? Because Brown Dust 2 has phenomenal looking characters, a really good story, like really good story, a very beautiful world. They give you a ton of heroes. They, they have tons of events. They have tons of opportunities to obtain premium currency. The combat, the turn-based combat was surprisingly difficult and very fun. I feel like there was nothing about Brown Dust 2 that I didn't like. It just, it, it played just like an old JRPG. Next we have Counterside. I actually played a bunch of Counterside again recently. Um, I put that in the R category. It was, it was very, like, I, I had very little interaction with it. I just set it to auto, let everything go itself. The AI seemed really dumb, constantly died. There didn't really seem like there was that much to do. I like it. It, it was okay. I just kind of got bored with it. Now, Dawnlands is also an entier quality game. I played seven hours of the beta of the recent version of it. Whatever mo recent version was most recently playable, and it was just like a basic, boring survival game with a lot of gotcha elements. That was horrendously incomplete and there was just nothing that i enjoyed about it then we have destiny child which shut down unfortunately but was an sr tier quality game that was very fun it had beautiful character models the, the people that worked on it also work on nike they did blade and soul magna carta unfortunately it never achieved the same level of success that nike did or the stellar blade is going to achieve Honestly, it was a it was a pretty fun game. I don't think it was anything great. The the combat was decent. The story was pretty good. The characters themselves, like they were, they were packing. This light was an I put it in R tier. It wasn't bad. I had some fun in it, but then I got bored pretty quickly. I don't feel like its combat was very good. I thought its story was surprisingly fun and humorous. I think that the story didn't take itself seriously at all. And that allowed for some very fun interactions between the characters. But I like outside of the story and outside of the fun music, that was kind of it, which doesn't leave a whole lot to the game. Next, we have Devil May Cry Peak of Combat. That is immediately N. This was one of the worst mainstream video game adaptations I have ever played. The voice acting was horrific. The gameplay was atrocious. The graphics, the world, everything was utterly disgusting. Disgusting. I would not recommend anyone ever waste a single second of their time playing that game. Duet Night Abyss, I would put up in the SSR tier. The beta that Mr. Six and I played was so much fun. It was unbelievably enjoyable and polished for a beta test. The combat was really good. This is the, the Warframe waifu game. The characters look great. The dubbing was really good. The story was okay, which is why I didn't put it any higher than SSR tier. The world was fun to explore. I didn't find a single thing in the game that I didn't 
like. Now, that doesn't mean it stands out as one of the best gotcha games in the genre, but it definitely does stand out as one of the better ones. Next, we have Acocalypse. This is a... I don't know where to put this game, chat. Like, it's somewhere between SR and R. I think, like, its story isn't that good. The combat isn't really that good. Like, the whole autoplay aspect of it is fine. The, the character animations look decent. Everything about the game, I'd say, is, like, R plus tier quality. But then you have the character models in this game. And the characters... I think bring this up to an SR just because the characters look too good. I think they help elevate the game to a level that most gacha games just cannot compete with. Next we have Epic 7. I actually did enjoy some of the story in Epic 7. I enjoy some of the gameplay in Epic 7. I enjoy the character models in Epic 7, the waifus especially. I think Epic 7 is is definitely, it definitely belongs in the SR tier category. I don't think it's a, it's a great game, but I think it's pretty good. Next is Eversoul. Eversoul is probably, I'd put Eversoul in the SR tier quality. I like in the SR category, I'd put Eversoul in the SR category because it has beautiful characters. It has a pretty decent story. It felt like there was a lot to do. It felt like it wasn't a low quality, low budget idol game like you'd think it would be given the fact that it was an idol game. Next we have Evertale, which I'd put in the R tier. I played a month worth of Evertale so I could do the dedicated video I did on it. And I did a dedicated video on this, I think, right? Yeah, just just yesterday, or not yesterday, just two days ago, I did a video on Evertale. So I, had, I poured in so many hours into this game. And uh, honestly, the more I played of it, the less bad it became. So I would put it in R tier. But at the same time, like the, the false advertising to do for the game is obnoxious. Then we have, uh, shit, what's his name? Fairy Tale Fierce Fight. This is the game that we're currently streaming <coughs> in the background right now. Uh, this game is one of the worst games I played this year. There's not a single redeeming feature about it. There isn't anything that I think is even remotely close to being passable as a gacha game. The game looks bad the characters look bad the fighting the combat is bad the story is just parts of it ripped from the game uh, from the anime it's just it's horrible and we have fake grand order oh man where do i put this i've played probably like 80 hours of fake grand order man i feel like this would definitely be an ssr gotcha game if it had decent pity which it does not have <sighs> I know some people are going to be upset that Fate Grand Order is in only SR tier, but like Fate Grand Order has a good story. It has decently fun, like turn-based ish to an extent combat. You know, it, it looks pretty good, but the fact that there it is not free to play friendly really drives down how highly I'd rate it. All right, next we have uh oh man, what is this? What is this weird little blonde blue-eyed like freakishly demonic food edible little creature thing here i forget what what this is what this character is from um i feel like whatever character this is from like it, it's not memorable enough for me to even like recall its name so i like that's just an immediate end tier right yeah definitely end tier just purely based off of how horrible people are going to be in the comment section when they realize <laughs> when they hit they pause this and they're like how dare you and then realize that i was just joking <laughs> oh oh man <laughs> yeah so i feel like uh, yeah, I'd put Genshin in an SSR. I feel like uh, Genshin is probably like, and I know this is going to upset some people. I think I did this with my last tier list too. I didn't put Genshin in UR because I feel like Genshin, while a very fun game, still isn't like the best game I've ever played. It has what is probably and arguably the best world I've ever explored. It has a good story, especially when you get to like, you know, the later parts of like, 2.x and into 3.0 i think it has some good looking characters i think honkai star rail i think nike i think there are other games out there that have better looking characters genshin's pity being like a 50 50 at 90 and then 
100% and 180 means it's not too free to play friendly. I know they do give you a lot of currency periodically while playing the game, but I feel like even though this does excel and is kind of used as a like a baseline for gotcha games right now, I still think that there are games that are better than it. Then we have Girls Frontline, which I've honestly, I, people actually got upset with me last time, but I'm still going to put it in the R tier category because I just didn't have that much fun with Girls Frontline. I don't think it looked that great. I don't think it played that great. I thought it was very slow. Didn't really have that great of a story. There wasn't really anything about it that made me want to continue playing it. All right, next. I don't know how many of you know what this game is, but Guardian Tales is definitely an SSR tier quality game because it has an, it, it actually does, it has an incredible story. It's a lighthearted story that's also kind of dark and messed up and twisted. It's again, doesn't take itself at all seriously for a lot of the time. It uh, looks and feels like an old Zelda game. I think the, the ability to freely explore every map and find hidden little things that open up side stories and side missions means that you're always forced to take the time to actually explore everything and to actually like take every little hidden path just to make sure you're not missing anything. The The combat is really fun. The special effects and the fact that you can equip any weapon on your characters, like swapping the kind of class they are is really cool. Guardian Tales is, is definitely one of the more fun games out there that I've played. I actually do still play this to this day. Not that often, but often enough. Honkai Impact 3rd, I would probably place above Ether Gazer at SSR. I feel like Honkai Impact 3rd, now, I haven't played too much of this game, so my opinion might be a little bit biased and invalid, but I think the characters in Honkai Impact 3rd look look very good, not incredible. I think in terms of quality, I'd say they're, they're comparable to Genshin's characters. I think that the story gets a lot better the further you continue to play through. I think I played through like nine or 11 chapters total of the game, maybe less. I have to check. Yeah, don't quote me on how much I played. I think it was that much, but I could be completely off. I don't know. So don't take that as fact. I think the, the, the gameplay itself is actually very good. And just overall, I had a lot of fun when I played what little of it I did play, probably like a dozen, two dozen hours. Higan Arithal is I'd put in the end category. It had the potential to be good, but they took everything that could have been good and just made it bad. There really wasn't any redeeming features, I think, surrounding the game. It just ended up being ultimately very bad. And the fact that it makes less than 100k per month is evidence the fact that everyone else also believes it is very bad. Idoli Pride is next. I did not like that game. I did not like Idoli Pride. All you did was um, watch your little schoolgirls dance. And I got copyright claimed when I did my video because I showed a few seconds of the concert they did. <laughs> That's pretty much it. You work as a manager for a group of teenage idols. Uh, yeah, I'm not into rhythm games. Oof, now this is gonna be a, a, this is gonna cause a little bit of drama because I know people are gonna be upset that I have Genshin in SSR and not UR, but with Honkai Star Rail, I think the story is actually very well done. I don't think it's, I don't think the story is mind blowing or, you know, anything genre defining, but it is a very good story. I love turn-based RPGs. They are more fun to me than I think action RPGs typically. So this game is a good story. It has combat that I am more interested in. This game has a fun world to explore. It has very good voice acting. It has, I think, better looking characters than Genshin or Honkai Impact 3rd has. I like the designs better in Honkai Star Rail. I know that you guys know the difference between Genshin style and uh, Star Rail style of characters and aesthetics. I think the world is beautiful. I think they're much more free to play friendly. I think they're much more generous in terms of what they give especially with regards to like anniversary events and also like Genshin could never, right? So with everything that Honkai Star Rail does right, I think that definitely deserves to be in the UR category without a doubt, right? All right, next we have King's Raid. Um, Honestly, King's Raid was, I don't think was bad. Or at least I don't think it was horrible. Let's be honest. I don't think it's, it's nearly as horrible as any of the games in the end tier. There wasn't anything that ever made me actually want to play it though. All right, here we have Legend of Neverland, which honestly I would not put in the end tier. I, I know people wanted me to because it's literally the most blatant Genshin clone ever created. But at the same time, it's literally just like an ugly, undetailed, poor quality Genshin clone 
with autoplay. And I know there were some people that still, you know, for whatever reason, enjoyed the game. I started playing it recently so I can acquire footage of it for a video. And there are still tons of people in there playing it. I don't understand why, other than the fact that it's just not as horrible as I thought it was. Limbus Company is, a, I think, an SSR tier quality game. I had so much fun when I played that. It was so complex, so deep, so thought-provoking, and just very intricate in how the game was designed. I, I really, really, really need to focus on getting back into that game because I love the style of game that it was. Next is Memento Mori. Um, I hate this game. I actually hate this game. I've been playing it for 34 days now and I fucking hate this game. You do absolutely nothing in it. You literally, you, you just, you complete auto stuff every day. It's got beautiful music. It's got beautiful characters. Like everything about it is, is so picturesque and stunning, visually stunning, but they gate everything so horribly. Like, to progress through the game, you need to upgrade your characters because the the combat power requirements are so high. So to upgrade your characters, you need to have dupes of your characters. They need to go through several tiers. So you start off as an example, you have a basic golden character and then you turn them into a purple character. Or sorry, you turn it from a gold character into like a gold character with a little icon near it, then a gold character with a secondary, a red icon instead of like a purple icon, and then they become a purple outline, and then they get a purple outline with a little red icon, and then they get a purple outline with a purple icon that's like five levels of upgrading that require one to two dupes per upgrade. It is the worst type of gated progression I have seen in a gacha game ever, and I absolutely hate it. Now, if it wasn't for that, this would probably be an SR tier quality game, but I actually absolutely hate that. Then we have Neural Cloud. Neural Cloud R tier. Definitely in the R category. Decent game. It really is. It got monotonous real fast and I dropped it, but it, it's not It's not a bad game. There just wasn't really anything in it that I was like, oh man, this is so much fun. Nikkei. This is my current number one favorite gacha game. Arguably the best looking waifus you will find in a gacha game. Comparable only to Azure Lane. Really deep, dark story that you wouldn't expect from a game that advertises itself as the one-handed gacha game very difficult content that requires you actually play it the further you get through it like the whale boss in like chapter 21 or 22 took me a month to successfully beat it was horrible i think i just got lucky one time and uh i managed to to kill the boss i think the events are for the most part really good i think the the outfits for the characters are great i like the fact that i don't have to do too much in the game i can just play the story do the dailies do the events and not have to participate really in the pvp if you don't want to or the raids if you don't want to or anything and you're not really gonna miss out they're very generous their uh anniversary event gave us so much literally so much the over the last few months we've gotten i feel like hundreds of free pulls for the game it's just i i, I love everything about this game and i think it is one of the highest quality most enjoyable gacha games out there that don't involve you necessarily spending too much time actually in it i think the game actually for the most part respects your time then we have um nino kuni cross worlds they absolutely destroyed that game it was a beautiful game decent combat and they gutted it with blockchain nft like whatever they could to milk that game for every cent they could they did and they completely destroyed it its community dried up in months this game had like tens of millions of players day one and it has tens of players a year later one punch man world this was uh this was uh, admittedly a very boring game but not horrible it was bad it was bad but not horrible like it wasn't ruined to the point of like it it, it it didn't have irreparable damage done to it but at the same time it was still very bad the combat was okay the story was focused on characters like d tier characters that nobody gave a fuck about the the rates for everything were horrible you had to pay a ton of money to obtain anything in anyone it was just not at all fun not at all good outer plane i'd also put here i know i actually put outer plane i think pretty low last time too some person came onto my video and berated me for it they told me that i have no idea what i'm talking about and that the game is actually the best gacha game ever to have released and i'm like that's perfectly fine like for you but not for me this game was just i don't know it was very basic it, it didn't really offer anything that other games don't already do better which also explains why it doesn't really earn any money now punishing gray rape oh man i don't know how i'm gonna 
put this here without upsetting some people. But I'd say Punishing Grey Raven is definitely an SSR tier game. I've been playing a lot more of it recently because with Wuthering Waves just around the corner, I've been trying to get back into Punishing Grey Raven and push through more of the content. And it is really good. Story is decent. Like, I've never thought the story in Punishing Grey Raven was, you know, like exemplary or staple of the genre. But I've always really, I think Punishing Raven has some of the best combat in a gacha game. A good story. It's also one of the most free-to-play friendly gacha games out there, I think. Guaranteeing you a, a character at like 50 pulls, I think. 50 or 60 pulls. I forgot which of the two, but it's like around there. Beautiful character models. I, I honestly think that they don't have enough characters in the game. And they, they actually, they're introducing a, a new character. Um... Hanying? Oh my god, man. Like, holy crap, dude. Oh my god. Punishing Grave, and I would put it at SSR plus tier, but I feel like the one thing that holds the game back from being UR tier to me is that I think the story could be better. And I think, like, like I know I have games in here that aren't open world, but I feel like, and I don't know why. I know people are going to complain about this. They always do. But I feel like Punishing Grey Raven would be better as an open world game, which is what I think uh, Wuthering Waves is going to excel in and do well. Why it's going to do well. I know there are certain games that I think would just benefit from being an open world game. Like Ark Knights is an example I don't think would be better as an open world game. I think it works well as a tower defense game. I think Honkai Impact Third works well as like a an instant mission-based chapter-based game. But Punishing Grey Raven would be so good if you could explore the world with its combat and characters. You know, I don't know. That's the one game I think really would benefit from being in a different genre that it's in. Path to Nowhere SSR tier, easy. It's like Ark Knights, but darker, more gruesome, more adult-like, not with chibi characters. Very good game, very fun. Raid Shadow Legends, I have disliked. I played it for over 10 hours. I actually hated it. It was very boring. There wasn't a single thing I liked about it. I don't know why so many people like it and why it continues to make $15 million, $17 million a month. Reverse 1999 is like, I, I know this game is not for everyone, but I've always thought that this was probably one of the most beautifully crafted gotcha games I've ever played. Story phenomenal, voice acting phenomenal, gameplay very fun. The graphical style and aesthetic is beautiful. Like, it, it, you know, it's not punishing. It's not unfree to play friendly. The game is just like, in terms of it being kind of akin to a, an old RPG, I feel like this really captures a lot of the essence of what they were. It's just like, the game absolutely blew me away with how quality it felt. Seven Mortal Sins X. That's an R tier. Definitely not an N tier category or N. Oh, what is it? Okay, there we go. It was relatively boring, but it had really hot waifus. So I feel like that that just raises it from the N tier. Then we have Snowbreak. Oh, man. So Snowbreak, originally, I would have put in the R tier or SR tier. But after seeing all of the super hot new waifus and the completely overhauled direction of the game, I would place it higher. I dare say, with the new direction of Snowbreak, the fact that it's making several times more money now than it was before because of its hyper fixated focus on big booba waifus with big booties as well, that definitely deserves an increase in rating and positioning. So that's just me. I love the new characters in it. I think we deserve more third-person shooters in gacha gaming, especially third-person shooters that don't have bad gameplay. Third-person shooters actually have pretty decent gameplay with good-looking characters. The fact that you can freely explore your, like, dorm area and interact with your waifus behind closed doors, like, a lot of... All that's just very cool. Solo leveling Arise? Oh, man, where would I put that? I would probably... do. it's better than... It's a lot better than One Punch Man World. I'd probably put that in the SR tier quality because I actually... I did genuinely have fun playing that. I did. When we streamed it on stream for a couple days, I had a, I, I did have some fun playing it. The combat was good. The character models looked pretty good. The story was... De the, the, there were some really attractive characters in it. I think it was a pretty decent game. Then we have Starseed Asnia Trigger. We played that on stream last week just released. It's currently only available in Korea, I think. Um, it's not great. I'd put that in R tier. It has, it is, it, it's fan service levels are over the top. 
probably even more fan service than Nike. But outside of that, and outside of its really, really good looking character models, it doesn't have anything going for it at all. Next, we have Summoner's War Chronicles. Man, like that was a pretty game. It was. <coughs> the, the game looked beautiful in terms of aesthetic, but that's it. There wasn't a single thing I liked about it. The auto combat, the creature collection was bad. Uh, I don't even remember there being a story. There, I, yeah, I didn't like the game at all. It was just a big blot for me. Then we have Tacked Up Symphony. Should we even include that? Because it shut down. I, I did a, a video saying I didn't like it, and then the game shut down. <laughs> I, <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and include it. If I if I had to rank it, I would put it R. I don't think it was horrible. I just don't think it was very fun. It was really monotonous and really slow and boring, but it looked beautiful and it had great music. So, you know, it, it looked pretty and sounded pretty. Now, Tower of Fantasy, I think last year I put this in the SSR tier. Like, I know there, you know, there are some people of the Tower of Fantasy community, they're like, Sticks milks the game, you know, for views and everything. And, uh, you know, like, if, if, a, if, if a game can be milked for views, or a topic, rather, if a topic can be milked for views, then why not do it, right? Like, you don't need to necessarily dislike or like something to do videos on it. Uh, when Diablo 4 had lots of drama, for months, people milked that incessantly. You know, with Scarlet Blade, uh, sorry, um, Stellar Blade right now, people are milking that drama because there's just so much surrounding it. Like, I, I've disagreed with some of the things that Tower of Fantasy, the studio behind Tower of Fantasy, have done with it, with its PC release, and then further with its console release and not having the crossplay functionality there. Uh, I didn't like the ball collection from, like, 3.x in Tower of Fantasy because I played 3.01 and 2 and then stopped in 3.2, I think, because I just got bored with the ball collection. Um, I will be playing it somewhat for like 4.0 whenever it eventually launches. And so I could do a 2024 video on it as well. But I think Tower of Fantasy has attractive female characters. I think, I don't think it has very attractive male characters. I think Tower of Fantasy does have a beautiful world. I think Domain 9 and all of the elemental regions that were added after that were phenomenal looking. I think in terms of combat, the old characters probably would put it in an R tier, but the newer characters definitely increase it to like SR tier. I think that the story, even after 3.X, hasn't really been that great. I think it's been a, a, diff, uh, a marketable upgrade. I think that the game is fairly free to play friendly. It's not like, it's not pay to win. Well, I mean, you know, since it does have a, a focus on multiplayer content and you can pay for like better quality characters technically it has a degree of pay to win and the power creep is there but like disregarding that because a lot of games have that let's be honest here i still i feel like i'd still put tower fantasy in ssr just because at like you know despite everything that is wrong with the studio behind it the game itself still manages to be a pretty good quality game at its core and we're we're rating the games based off of the games themselves and not the dumb shit the studios have done to the games valiant force 2 wait did valiant force 2 shut down right it did a few months ago crap okay well yeah i, I admittedly i didn't have really any fun in that either then we have wuthering waves so earlier i mentioned punishing gray raven would be a, a ur tier quality game if and only if it were an open world game, I think, and I know this is going to upset some people. A lot of these rankings will. I know people are going to be pissed Tower of Fantasy is in the SSR. I know people are going to be pissed Genshin is in the SSR. But I think Wuthering Waves, based off of multiple beta tests that I have played, and based off of the changes that they are making, will definitely leave this as a UR quality game. Do I think it will be more successful financially than Genshin? No. But it doesn't have to be to be a game that is as good, if not better. The combat is vastly superior. The world is beautiful and comparable. The story, debatable. The voice acting seemed pretty good. The exploration was really fun. Being able to wall run, being able to uh, vault yourself, being able to latch onto things with your um, little hookshot thing. Like there were so many ways of traversing the world, which was very fun. The game was relatively difficult. There was a decent amount of content. The characters look incredible, which I know, 
you know, some people are like, well, the characters look too muted. They look too bland and ordinary. That's fine. But to me, they look really good. I'm a fan of Punishing Gray Raven's characters and also a fan of Wuthering Waves characters. I think this is going to be a big hit when it releases. And I think based off of what I've played and what I've seen that they're doing with the game, it's definitely going to, definitely deserving of its UR category. Zenless is an SSR tier. It's, it definitely is. I think like if, if I think if they removed the focus on the TVs and put like a lot more focus on the gameplay, I could increase that. But right now, based off of the two test phases I've played and the third one that I'm probably going to play soon when the next test is held, the amplifying test, it is deserving of an SSR. I don't think it's going to be as high quality as some of the other games there. I think its story looks like it's going to be pretty good. Its combat is very good. The character models look great before they were nerfed, at least like Nicole. I think that... Um, voice acting was good but the the horrific focus on the tvs was just horrible i think that's a yeah i think that's pretty good actually hmm, i'm looking at this and i do see two things that i probably would change okay i did make a bit of a mistake here i i did include two ssr tier games or two sr tier games as ssr so let me make two small adjustments i think i think i rated snowbreak too high i think Snowbreak probably deserves the SR tier. I think I put too much emphasis on the how attractive the new waifus were for Snowbreak. <laughs> Looking at some of the other games, I'm like, maybe, maybe it deserves a, a, a tier downgrade. So when I did the last tier list for, and I included Tower of Fantasy, it was before the they made the crossplay functionality between console and PC non-existent. So I'd probably, I should probably reduce the rating, the ranking for Tower of Fantasy to SR. I think if it was cross-play compatible between console, PC, mobile, it would be SSR. But since they messed that up, I'd probably reduce it down because it just, I think that was a very dumb move to make. But yeah, that I feel like that, yeah, that looks better. I feel like I rated two of them too highly. That's my list. Good take. Thank you. Thank you tons. Oh wow, you fixed it. Yeah, I feel like that looks better. I know some people are still gonna complain Azure Lane is here. Reverse 1999 is here, and Genshin is here. Like, they're, I think, going to be the three main complaints. But at the end of the day, yeah, Genshin is really good. But that doesn't mean it's the best. I just I just readjusted it because of the the crossplay compatibility, I think. I didn't take that into consideration. Because if you think about it, why did I rate Ethergazer SR and not SSR? The reason I rated Ethergazer SR was because it isn't crossplay compatible with PC. If it had a PC client, this would be in an SSR tier category. So why did I rate Tower Fantasy SSR when it has the same issue, like the same crossplay compatibility issue between console and PC mobile? Anyway, that is my tier list.